A son for a son. Will Rhaenyra finally get her revenge? In the final episode of the second season of House of the Dragon, Alicent betrayed her own side and proposed to Rhaenyra to help her conquer King's Landing in exchange for her escape. But this desperate move by Alicent may cost her what she is just trying to obtain, her freedom and even her own life. This begs the question, what would Otto's reaction be if he finds out what his daughter has done? In this video, we'll be looking at Alicent's betrayal and what might happen to her in Season 3. And for more videos from the universe of A Song of Ice and Fire, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Welcome to the Three-Eyed Raven. Before we start with this video, if you want to participate in our giveaway, in which we will be giving away a Funko Pop from House of the Dragon, you just have to comment which king or queen you will bend your knee for and why. The winner will be announced on August 16th. In order to see what might happen to Alicent in the third season of House of the Dragon, we must first look at what led Alicent to betray her own side. From the beginning of the first season, we could see that Rhaenyra and Alicent were very good friends, as if they were sisters. In the first episode, when Rhaenyra, after flying with Cyrax, tells Alicent that she could soon fly with her on the dragon. This is an unusual offer, but one that we later see Daemon make to Lady Missaria. This denotes a high level of trust and complicity. The Targaryen were feared and admired for their connection to dragons. And the fact that Rhaenyra offers this to Alicent shows the level of trust and even love she had for Alicent. I also remember the scenes where Alicent is narrating a story to Rhaenyra, while Rhaenyra is resting on her lap. By that time, we could see how Rhaenyra was dreaming of having a different life. Those scenes were so important, that it became one of the most important part when after the usurpation, Otto Hightower brings her the page of the history book that Alicent used to read to Rhaenyra when they were teenagers appealing to her feelings so that she would kneel before her brother Aegon. At that moment we could see that this affected Rhaenyra greatly, and she starts to cry, because she remembers the feeling she had for Alicent. She remembers the time when their hearts were one. Something much more than a simple friendship truly existed between Rhaenyra and Alicent. They were family. But unfortunately the circumstances of the kingdom and politics led them to end up being enemies and on different sides. Although they are enemies now, on several occasions we have seen that they prefer to avoid war, because deep down, they do not want to hurt each other. A great example of this is episode 3 of the second season, in which we saw a Rhaenyra who decided to risk her life and meet Alicent in the Sept, because Rhaenyra wanted to avoid starting a war that could have a solution. This conversation in the Sept was very important because basically they were able to understand that everything that happened was because of a misunderstanding, as Alicent misinterpreted the last words of her husband Viserys on his deathbed. And although Alicent was stubborn and did not accept the mistake, Alicent could not stop thinking about it, to the point that it led her to visit Rhaenyra at Dragonstone. In this scene, we see a remarkable contrast in Alicent from the first and the second encounter with Rhaenyra. Now, most likely, having this conversation with Rhaenyra awakened in Alicent the same feeling of love she felt for her friend since childhood, as she began to bite her fingers as she did before when they were inseparable. And another detail that I can't miss is the change of color in her clothes. Alicent began to dress as she did when she was a teenager, so it suggests that she misses the sense of security of her past and how she used to live before. Perhaps that time was the most calm and peaceful time for her, and she even tells Rhaenyra to run away from King's Landing with her. But Rhaenyra is already determined to follow the will of her father Viserys, so she lets her know that the throne is her destiny. But what was it that led Alicent to look like her younger version? After that conversation in the Sept, Alicent begins to analyze the behavior of his sons, and their disinterest in taking the crown seriously. Thanks to their behavior, everything keeps getting worse, as they have their own selfish plans. 
This causes Alicent to realize that they are to blame for the fact that she has lost everything. First, she loses her husband King Viserys. Then she loses her father and ally Otto Hightower, when his son Aegon removes him as Hand of the King. Then she loses control of her sons. Aegon, who ends up bedridden. And Aemond making impulsive and impetuous decisions in his new position as King Regent. That's a lot of losses in a very short time that can unsettle anyone's mind. Alicent thinks the gods are punishing her for the sins she has committed. And now she has lost the only thing she had left that made her life meaningful, her position on the council. Alicent escapes from King's Landing looking for peace, but she realizes that she has no choice but to reach the heart of the one who was her best friend in her younger years. To ask for clemency and surrender, because she does not want to lose her life. First, Alicent begins by accepting to Rhaenyra that she was wrong. Alicent always lived under the belief in the order of things, that there is safety in following the path laid out for her, referring to her father Otto Hightower. Alicent was angry with Rhaenyra, because Rhaenyra did not live preoccupied with such things, she was somewhat like a free soul. But Rhaenyra at this point distrusts Alicent, and asks her what the purpose of her visit is, to which Alicent replies that she wants to live. Alicent knows that what now awaits her is death. Rhaenyra has the military advantage, and is not only aerial with Adam, Hugh, and Ulf, but with Damon and his men at Harrenhal. So Alicent now fears for her life and recognizes that there is no turning back. Alicent visits Rhaenyra to appeal to the love they once had for each other, to allow her to escape with her daughter Helena and granddaughter Jahera. But Rhaenyra brings her to her senses, for there is no turning back. What she started can no longer be stopped. But Alicent has a card up her sleeve. In her desperation, she offered to help Rhaenyra conquer King's Landing. As soon as her son Aemon joins Sir Criston Cole's army at Harrenhal. Now in the Game of Thrones universe, treason is paid with life, and Alicent is lucky that Rhaenyra is forgiving her who once was her best friend. But it stands to reason that Rhaenyra would not grant such a request to Aegon. The cost of usurping the throne is death. And Rhaenyra has no choice because if she spares his life, her authority as queen could be at risk. Then, Rhaenyra put Alicent against the wall. A son for a son. Alicent must choose between facing her fate as a traitor or handing her son, the usurper king, over to Rhaenyra. Those seconds of silence seemed like an eternity, until Alicent nodded in agreement. Rhaenyra allows her to return to King's Landing with the promise of her word. Now what happens when Rhaenyra arrives at King's Landing and realizes that Aegon escaped just before Alicent turns him in? Alicent made it clear that if things were not as she spoke of, to take her for a liar. This means treason, and it is a very big crime that could be paid for with life. The thing is that Laris has his own agenda, and he suspects that Aemond is going to take his life, so he plans to escape to save the life of the usurper king, at the same time that Alicent is in the process of betraying him. But what will happen to Alicent when Rhaenyra thinks she lied to her? Most likely Rhaenyra will take her as a prisoner, and this time she won't be able to spare her life because it would make her look like a weak queen. Rhaenyra could keep her as a prisoner until she can catch Aemond and Aegon, so that she can force Alicent to see the death of her children, before she takes her life. Aegon went on the run from his brother, unaware that his own mother is far more dangerous. So at the moment, the green side is very weak. Aemond was overcome by fear, to the point that he wants to take action at the worst moment, because there is no way they can be victorious against the black side. Right now, Rhaenyra has far more power than the Greens. Aegon severely wounded, Otto missing, and an Aemond blinded by the courage and fear he feels at the moment. But if Otto could escape from where he is trapped, what would he think of Alicent's actions? Do you think he would seek to help her? Or do you think he would disown her? Otto is always looking out for the welfare of his family, even if it is outwardly so he would most likely try to take control of the situation to make his daughter look good. Just as he did with the death of his great-grandson, Prince Jaehaerys. On the other hand, Otto is very political, 
so if he sees that he has no other option to look good to the crown or politically speaking, he could punish his daughter in the cruelest way you can think of. But tell me, what do you think about all this? What do you think about Alicent's behavior? Do you think Rhaenyra was right to let Alicent return to King's Landing? Do you think Otto would help his daughter? Share your opinion in the comments. And if you liked this content, I invite you to become a member of this channel. Each contributor will see their name at the end of all videos. And for more videos of theories, news and stories from the Game of Thrones universe, don't forget to subscribe to this channel.